How do you recover? So these are my top ways that I like to recover on a weekly basis. Number one, I make sure that I stick religiously to my rest days. So right now, as is, I do three days on, one day off, two days on, one day off. So that means I'm doing street parking workouts Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, I take completely off. Friday and Saturday, I get back to street parking workouts. And then Sunday is also a day I take completely off. I spend time with the family, run around with Knox, do anything that I have to do for the home, so errands, whatever it may be. Making sure I stick to the rest days as scheduled every single week. Now keep in mind, you could always move those around, but that format is something I like to follow, just so that way I don't lead myself into burning out. Because there have been times where I pushed on days where I'm like, Today I'm gonna to do an active rest day. Now you guys may be a little bit different, but for me, I come from a very competitive background, so my active rest days end up turning into some kind of a workout, whether I like it or not. So I found that just taking the day completely off, which gets me really excited to get back into my workout after my rest day. Number two, which is piggybacking off of number one, which is on the rest days, have a plan for your rest days. So for me, on one of the rest days, I like to take a walk around my neighborhood or take a moment to sit down and read. Now, on my walks, you can also choose to listen to some audiobooks. So education in general, whether it be nutrition, whether it be self-development, whether it be real estate, whatever topic that you're into, take the time to learn something. Take a new course that you want. Learn a little bit about it, structure your meals. That for me has been very fulfilling and it takes my mind off of working out because if you don't have a plan, most likely you're gonna give yourself a little itch to want to go back into doing some kind of fitness, which is not the goal, right? You wanna take advantage of your rest days, so have a plan. Number three, now this one, you may not have it in your budget, but that's okay. It's something that I like to do, so I'm just gonna throw it out there. I'm a big fan of the Theragun that I do have. On days off, I like to use my Theragun, which is good for percussive therapy. I like to take the time to mash my hamstrings, my calves, my forearms, anything that might be sore from the street parking workouts. It's my time to sit in the garage or indoors or wherever my, I may be relaxing and just grab my Theragun and go through some really good sessions. Now, for those of you guys who do not have it in your budget to purchase the Theragun, that's okay. Other things that you can do is grab a foam roller, a lacrosse ball, and end up doing some mashing sessions at home, which is just as beneficial. So whether you're using a Theragun or a lacrosse ball and a mashing tool, just do whatever. It really ends up helping, especially in the long term. Number four, this is something that I also like to incorporate at least once a week. As much as I may be stubborn about it, just because it forces me to slow down, we do have a good SP maintenance library for street parking. So I like to take the time, again, whether it be in the garage or outside on a beautiful sunny day, I just like to turn on my video, get a good stretching session in, and allow my body to recover using some SP maintenance. Number five on my list is going to be nutrition. Now this is something that has taken me a long, long time to kind of dial in and figure out what works best for me. And it doesn't even have to be so dialed in, just taking baby steps for the long term. That way you start feeling good on a day-to-day -day basis. You're fueling your body with the fuel that it needs. So yes, we've heard it a thousand times. It's as simple as just buying whole unprocessed foods. You eat your veggies, eat your greens, get your protein, whatever protein source that may be, your healthy fats, Make sure you're drinking plenty of water throughout the day. Limit your coffee consumption because that starts affecting what my number six is going to be, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But start by educating yourself on nutrition a little bit. If you don't have the ability to slow down and just sit down and read a book, that's fine. That's why I have been a big, huge fan of audiobooks. Really good recommendations that I'm gonna throw out there are why we get fat, the case against sugar, the obesity code, and there's many, many more out there that are a great way for you to start understanding nutrition. Also, when it comes to nutrition, one of the things that you can do is plug that in on your rest day and meal prep. So if that means Sunday for the most of us, you have to meal prep, make meal prepping something that you involve your family in. Look forward to going to the grocery store, look forward to spending time with your family and educating your family as to why you're prepping what you're prepping. It's really fun once you start understanding the way food works and just how food makes you feel once you're starting to make the better, healthier choices. And number six, which honestly is the most important one that you can incorporate, 
is just sleep. Making it a habit to try to get at least seven to eight hours of sleep on a regular basis is so important. I'm gonna throw another book out there for you guys, Why We Sleep, because the benefits alone that sleep carries will outdo everything else. It is, I feel, like the foundation to nutrition and fitness. Now, I do understand that there's lots of obstacles that may get in our way when it comes to sleep, especially if you have newborns, toddlers, kids in general, right? It can be extremely hard to prioritize getting at least seven to eight hours of sleep. But one of the tips that I will throw out there is yes, try to go to bed a lot earlier if possible, or talk to your spouse Figure out what in your surrounding is gonna allow you to get at least seven to eight hours of sleep. Believe me when I say this, guys, the health benefits alone, if you get proper sleep, you cannot catch up and make up sleep like many people think. You can only start from where you're at now and moving forward. Some small tips to help you achieve getting some good sleep. Number one, make sure you guys have a good mattress under you. For us, it's been Ananda mattresses. They are amazing quality. They help us get really good sleep. Number two, make sure you're limiting your coffee consumption. So after 3 p.m., I do not like to drink any kind of caffeine. So switch to more of non-caffeinated teas. That helps out a lot. And number three, limit your screen time. Again, this is something that's been repeated numerous times, but try to get off of your cell phone after about 8 p.m. Figure out however you need to shift around your schedule earlier in your day so you don't have to get stuck looking at your phone after 8 p.m. You wanna start winding your body down to get into a good sleep flow. So I hope these six tips will help you guys when it comes to some good recovery. These are the things that I have worked really, really hard on and I still work on on a day-to-day -day basis because it is challenging. But one step at a time, these are my six top tips for you. So, hope that helps.